Okay, let's start. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, physically, we are connected here on CPPCon, the biggest event in the world in terms of C++. Um, today, I will talk to you about the physical units library that we are working on for several years. Um, I provided already a few talks about it, but this talk will be more scoped on my library rather than about the challenges, about things to do, and, and so on. Um, so we'll skip some parts of it. We'll not talk about motivation today. We'll not talk too much about existing practice and challenges because I covered this already on the talk a year ago. So, so you can find all the details there. And today we'll speak more about what, what are the results of, of our work and how the library stands comparing to competition. So here's the agenda for today. Um, we'll have a short introduction to the subject of physical units. We'll talk about strong interfaces, uh, how they help in making the library better, how they improve the, uh, the user experience. We'll talk about the performance, runtime performance here. We'll talk about user experience in general. And, and then I will provide some introduction to the framework. Uh, it's not the uh, whole framework introduction. We don't cover all of the details here. Uh, all of the details can be found in our documentation that I will describe you, I provide you in a, in a few minutes. And at the end, I will talk a bit about environment, compatibility, and next steps. Um, I will try to address the Q&A um, backlog uh, between those chapters. So please provide questions. While you provide questions regarding some specific slide number, please provide a slide down number so I can e easily come back to the specific slide and provide some answers. So without the further ado, let's start. What the physical unit is about. With physical units, we want to be able to provide different operations on physical units. Uh, in some terms, it's similar to what we have already in chrono, especially chrono duration class. So you can, for example, divide some, um, some quantity or specific dimension and with some unit by a value, by a scalar, by some, some uh, not a quantity. In such a case, you will just divide the value of the quantity, right? You can also convert between different units of the same dimension. When working with time, we can convert hours to seconds and compare them easily. Or we can add kilometers and meters and get result in meters. So again, it's similar to what we have already in chrono duration. However, this is new. Uh, we can provide different operations on different um, on different quantities over different dimensions. Um, those operations are multiplication and division, and they are used to change or provide a different quantity type on the as the result of the of the operation. So, for example, if we divide the length by time, we'll end up with the velocity here with speed in meters per second. We can compare the speed obtained here by in kilometers per second with meters per second. All the conversions work as in the previous case. We can multiply the speed by, by time and get length. We can divide length by uh, speed and get time. And of course, we can also multiply the same dimension, like length by length, and get an area, squared meters. And the next one um, is dividing length by length. So we can also divide the same dimension and get a dimensionless quantity with a value two in this case. Um, at last, we can divide the uh, value by a quantity and get an inverse quantity of this, of this type. So when we divide time, we get, we can, we can, when we divide by time, we get frequency, right? So this is something different, something that was not in chrono duration. Chrono duration was allowed us to divide the quantity by value, but not value by a quantity. So this is also something new here. Um, 
Just to answer the problem, possible question from the previous slides, uh, we are using this prefix uh, from, from for the user defined literals underscore Q. Um, and basically, we plan to replace it with Q underscore when we move to the uh, if, actually, if we will be merged with standard library, because it's not for sure. We'll try to do it, but it depends from the, from the interest, it depends from the amount of work needed to do it. We'll find out if, if it will happen or not. But we are trying to be prepared for it, and that's why I provided this Q underscore prefix, because uh, this prefix is a workaround to uh, basically not collide with built-in literals. For example, if you would like just to type something like 2F or 2J or 2W, all of them are already taken uh, by the built-in literals for some floating point numbers and, and others. And with this, we have a big problem for some units to express their, their units in literals. That's why we decided to go with Q underscore and then unit, like you've seen on the previous slide. Also, we have some literals like S, H, or M, right, uh, in chrono literals already. And you don't want to collide with them too. We are also working on alternative way to create quantities, not only with UDLs, but you can read more details about it on the issue 48 on our, on our GitHub, but it is too early to talk about it right now. Talking about documentation. We added a new documentation in last month. It's based on Sphinx. Uh, it's challenging, actually, to provide the documentation for a project written in C++20. Uh, start, there is a, a tool chain of, of tools we have to use. We are using Doxygen, we are using Sphinx, we are using Brief to generate those, and each of them has some problems with some specific C++20 syntax. So it was challenging, but I think the documentation is really nice, and I really uh, recommend you to, to go to it and, 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 and read if you are interested in the subject. And actually, you can find all of the details there. We'll not cover everything today. You can also test the library right away on the Compiler Explorer. To do this, you need to provide C++20 as the parameter for the compiler, use some recent GCC, and switch on the NPUnit library. Uh, I released 0.6.0 version a few days ago, so it's CppCon 2020 release. And all of the examples here will work with this um, with this release, even if you move further and break something, break interfaces in the future. So you can always refer to this to this tag 060 in order to be able to replay the uh, code samples that we provided during this talk. NPUnit is also available in Conan. Uh, you can find it in Conan Center. I would like to thank you, my friends from Conan, that I provided this Conan Center support yesterday in a few hours. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, so uh, you can get it from, from Conan Center. You can just type mpunit 060 and you get the latest release. It's a header only library, so it, it's really easy to use. Remember to use in Conan the compiler st the CPP STD flag equals 20. Otherwise, the library will not compile. You have to specify that you are compiling with C20 enabled. If you don't want to live with the latest release and wait for the next release for longer time and you would like to live at head, you are welcome to use uh, a bin tray when we are hosting the latest versions of the, of, the, of the stable packages that are created with every CI build, every CI build that's successful. Uh, for this, you will have to provide a bit different ID in Conan and add the remote of our bin tray to your Conan configuration. Also, if you'd like to stay at head, it's good to use minus B outdated and minus U to update recipes every time they are updated by us in the bin tree. Requirements for the physical use library that we uh, provided and uh, that we stated for ourselves are as follows. First of all, and this most important, the most important part is to provide compile time safety, right? The library should not compile if there is something wrong with our calculations. Second of all, we should provide the best user experience. So if something doesn't compile because you provided some, some bad uh, calculations, 
the compiler errors should be easy to understand for everyone because the whole purpose of existing of this library is to generate errors every day for you to find problems in your code. And also should be easy to debug this code, right? It should be fast. Uh, those abstractions should not introduce any runtime overhead. It should be as fast as double, or maybe faster. It should be easy to extend, because we will not provide all of the units, all of the systems that you probably need, so you can easily extend everything. You can add units, you can add dimensions, you can add all systems if you like. There should be no macros in the user interface, right? Because uh, this is not a modern C++. We are not um, allowed to put macros as the user interface in the C++ standard library. So if you plan to standardize it as a free part, freestanding part of the standard library, it doesn't have to, it cannot have macros and it shouldn't have any external dependencies. Right now it has a few because there is no FMT in any compiler from C++20. Also, we are using um, MSGSL for expects, but you know, actually it's not that important and this dependency can be easily dropped. I hope that contracts will be in C++23, so we'll replace it in with contracts in C++23. And that's all about the uh, about the introduction. I see a question. So SI is a particular choice of base units for mass length time temperature, etc. How to choose other non-SI base units? Uh, it's actually really simple to use it with different systems. We actually provide uh, already in our repositories uh, uh, units from the international system, from from US system, US customary system. We have all system for for foot uh, pound second and the whole system for CGS, so centimeter gram and and second. We also started to work and provide the support for natural units. It's really easy to extend it. There is a dedicated chapter in our documentation about how to create custom systems. So I really encourage you to, to go there and, and read it. I can provide some insights during the talk. And if you have time at the end, I may provide also some additional details about it, if there will be more interests about how to extend the library. But SI is the base, and probably SI will be the first one that will be standardized, if it will be standardized at all. So we are moving to strong interfaces. Um, for our discussion on strong interfaces, I would like us to work on such a simple toy example. Uh, we will have a simple average speed function that takes length, that takes time, and returns us the average speed, right? So distance by the duration. I would like to provide the speed both in kilometers and, and time in hours, but also in miles, international miles and hours. And in both cases, if I provide kilometers and hours, I would like to have a result in kilometers per hour. And in case, in the other case, miles per hour, right? It should be compile time safe. So all of the problems should be uh, provided during compile time. Uh, sub, there should be support for multiple units and unit prefixes. So you can see right now that it's supporting already in international units. And there should be no runtime overhead. It should be as fast as implemented with double. And there should be no intermediate conversions being done to base units and back, for example. So this is how you can implement this with plain double, right? This is what I've seen too many times in production, working as a consultant uh, in different companies. And it's also really common in open source to see things like this, macros, hours to seconds, kilometers to meters, and so on. And then you just have a function that takes double and another double and returns double. And there's a documentation saying the distance should be divided in meters Time should be in seconds, speed should be in meters per second. And this is only documentation, right? And it has to be, uh, basically it's a contract and everyone has to obey it according to this, to this contract. So if you want to implement this toy example one, when we want to provide kilometers and, and hours, we take some two double values 
uh, convert them to from kilometers to meters, from hours to seconds, do average speed, and return this one. Because we have to convert back from meters per second to kilometers per hour. Let me do something similar to miles per hour, right? Then if you want to print it, of course, it will print a double value, so it will just print 1, 10, and 70. And this is a correct result, right? But it's really easy to make errors here. So we want to make it better. Let's see how Boostionis does it. Uh, for all of the examples, you can find the Godball things here. You can um, provide them, you can type them and, and see how they actually perform in Godbot and, and see by yourself uh, how it works. So in order to provide this example, simple example in Boost units, you have to include a bunch of headers. Uh, there are not many uh, aggregated headers that will allow you to basically uh, include only one thing and it will just include everything else. You have to remember about every single header to put here. It's really hard to provide all sets needed and sometimes error messages are not that helpful to notice and to provide you information which header is missing. And then we are implementing the average speed function. We provide here a helper for boost units and we provide it, it takes quantity of length and quantity of time and there is quantity of velocity. And that's the calculation. Unfortunately, there is no uh, support in boost units, even though it's really huge library, to non-coherent units. So if you want to work with something different than meter and second, you have to provide the support by yourself for many things. You have to create stuff for kilometer, for mile, for hour, for kilometers per hour, for miles per hour, provide your own dimensions and, and, and your own units for those and constants for, of units for those. Uh, so it's not that easy to work with non-coherent units in, in boost units. So coming to our toy example with kilometers per hour, we get length in kilometer, time in hour. Uh, we call our average speed, but we have to explicitly uh, convert every time to the destination. Destination was uh, the, if you remember, uh, length, time, and velocity. and Actually, under it hood means that these are SI base units, so meters, seconds, and meters per second. It is not stated here clearly, but it means that exactly. So if you want to convert this uh, length in kilometers to length in meters, you have to do explicit conversion here, even though the conversion is really safe and it could be done implicitly, like it's being done by chrono duration. And the same goes for miles per hour. So there are no implicit conversions between quantities of the same dimension and comparable units. If you want to use those, um, Boost Unit uses this multiply syntax to create quantities. So you create 220 times kilo times meters uh, and two times hours, and you get a result, and then do the same for miles. If you want to print it, uh, it prints quite a correct uh, text for, for miles per hour, but for kilometers per hour, I would say it's not the best output, but still valid. Another library that I would re be referring here is a library un named Units, implemented by Nick Holthouse. In this library, actually it's a header-only library with one single header, that it's really easy to include everything. And then you provide average speed of meter, second, and return velocity in meters per second. And if you want to call it, you provide kilometer hour as an argument, and then they are implicitly converted to, to proper types, and then you return the, convert the result back to kilometers per hour. When you try to print it, it, even though it returns you kilometers per hour, it prints it in base units, meters per second. So it's not exactly what we would like to have here. I see there is a question. Uh, is it possible to take a dimension to value and ignore the dimension in a given calculation? Uh, Yes, uh, it has interface similar to, to duration. You can always get count, 
And with count, you just get a value from the quantity, so you are losing all of the strong typing here. Just before you call count, always remember about doing a quantity cast or a duration cast in case, in case of duration, because you want to make sure that the unit is exactly with which you intended here. So do not make any assumptions. Library may store different units in the type. So make a quantity cast on the quantity, and then you may do count and get the row value and work with, for example, legacy interfaces. But be careful, this is losing all of the safety here. And finally, uh, the MP units, the library that, that I implemented with, with contributors. Uh, we are including here um, the speed in SI and speed in, in international units systems. Um, and we have the uh, SI length in meters, SI time in seconds. So here we are stating explicitly that we are working with meters and seconds. And we are turning meter per second and just doing the calculation. Then our example with kilometers and hours uh, just implicitly converts those here because it's safe to convert kilometer to hour. It's made it, kilometer to, to meter and hour to second. It may not be safe to do it in a different order, but in this case, it's safe, it's safe so you can do this implicitly. This, the same rules as in case of chrono duration applies here. And then we are quantity casting this to kilometer per hour and returning a type and the value in kilometers per hour. And the same for miles per hour. When you want to uh, run this function, you provide here, for example, one with 220 quantity in kilometers to quantities in quantity of hours. And you get the output printer printed properly, as one would expect. However, uh, until now we were always taking the uh, we were always taking the, the the length in kilometers and time in hours. Then we're converting this to the base units, so meters and seconds, and then converting and getting the results in meters per second, and then converting by to kilometers per hour. And this is not the best uh, idea in terms of performance, right? Runtime performance. You would like to be able to do this in one step. If you are provide kilometers and hours, and we are interested in the speed in kilometers per hour, there should be no intermediate conversions. We should just divide kilometers per hours and get the results immediately, right? With one division. So how to do it? With doubles, it is easy. They will take everything, right? You just specify here that this is a double in kilometers, time in hours, double in miles, and everything works. Simple, right? Uh, with boost units, it actually starts to be complicated. We have to introduce templates, and it's not that easy to specify those templates. We are saying that it's a quantity of a unit of a length dimension and some system and some representation, and this is our distance, and you're doing the same for time, and this is our time. And to say we are returning speed, we actually have to create the speed uh, speed in kilometers per or the speed in the destination unit by ourselves, saying that we are taking unit of length provided here, of time provided here, and we are dividing those. So actually, we are here manually um, re-implementing the logic of the library. In case of Nick Holthaus library. Um, it's also not that easy to do. Actually, we cannot easily provide those specializations here, like in the previous case, but fortunately, there are type traits provided that you can use to provide enable if and, and basically sfine on specific types. Because if otherwise, this will take everything. Strings, vectors, whatever, right? It's just a type T. But with enable if, you can specify that the first one should be length, another one should be time. And it's not that easy to specify that should be a velocity returned back. So this is on a static assert provided as an implementation detail here, rather than um, the information provided directly in the, in the function interface. However, we, had, we got concepts in C++20. When we add one additional header to boost units, we can work with is quantity of dimension type trait, and we can create quantity of concept, and then say that we have concept length, that is quantity of length, time, quantity of time, velocity, quantity of velocity. And with this, we can implement all of the function in this way. 
with C++ 20 syntax of generic functions, right? This is generic functions similar to what we know for generic lambdas. Every time you see an auto as a parameter of a function or a lambda, then you know it's a template parameter under the hood. The same can be done for Nick Holthouse units. You may say that length is, is length, time is, time is time, velocity is, is velocity, and then you have exactly the same implementation of the function. So as you can see, it makes everything simpler, it makes everything generic, and the, it's really easy to maintain and understand. And that's why this is a, the default and recommended case to work in our library. All of those concepts are already provided uh, in, for all of the physical systems. So if you want to say, this is a length of any systems, I don't care. This is a time of any system, I don't care. This is a speed of any system, I don't care. I just want to return correct values. And this is what the code will do. Okay, we have a new question. Sometimes non-coherent SI units are necessary for uh, to ensure appropriate numeric precision. Is there a support for non-coherent units expected to solve this? Are there gotchas in library functions? Uh, Non-coherent SI units uh, are supported, and there is a really easy to, to provide those. The only problem I'm aware of with working with non-coherent SI units, and if they are not units uh, that are basically derived with SI prefixes, so multiplies of 10, is that basically the ratios start to get really, really big in some calculations. So, so for example, foot has some pretty complicated ratio already com in relative to, to meter. But if you make then a squared foot or cubic foot, it starts to be messy already. And with some more operations or some more strange uh, things like, I don't know, electron volt or maybe astro astronomic unit, you will find out that that ratio can go out of, um, out of precision, even though it uses 64-bit uh, 64, uh, 64 integers under the hood. So this is, this is the only gotcha I know here with working with non-coherent units. But as long as those are the coherent un non-coherent units with SA prefixes, so just an exponent of 10, you are free to use them easily. And there should be no problems. Okay, next chapter is about performance. I make this transparent because you already see this code. I don't want to spend time you reading this because we already analyzed this. For DABU, uh, the operations for all of the conversions through the coherent units, I provide three multiplies, two divides, and a bunch of moves. So some copies are being done. Actually, I was surprised to see those copies in the assembly. For boost units, it's pretty similar. We save one divide, so already boost units is faster than, than pure doubles. For Nick Holthouse, we don't have any of those copies, but the same number of multiplies and divides. And with our library, we don't have copies again, and we have only one division, so it's faster than working on doubles. At least in this case, implemented on the previous slide. When working with generic code, so if you want to just divide the values, then of course there's only a division provided here, right? If you provide kilometers and hours and want kilometers per hour, you just divide those and don't provide any intermediate conversions, and this is fine. With boost, there's also only one division, but some additional copies being done. Nick Holthouse on the division, our library on the division. So as you can see, you don't pay anything uh, comparing to using raw fundamental types. Um, with those additional abstractions that are that making everything type safe. And actually, in some cases, those abstractions provide even better performance than the raw fundamental types used under the hood. So it is type safe and fast in runtime. User experience. So as I said, everything here is about generating errors, right? And verifying our, our um, calculations. If there is an error, it should be found during compile time, not runtime. So in case of doubles, if you provide multiply instead of division and you say, I want to have speed, it's wrong, but actually it will compile fine, right? 
So all sorts of bugs can be provided here. There are errors of time. There are errors at runtime, but during compile time, everything compiles fine. If it wouldn't compile, then we wouldn't care and we'll never write this library because it will be already solved, right? The problem is to actually solve this problem that working on fundamental types is unsafe. And in times where a car drives for us while we sleep or, or, or play on the computer, it gets even more important to, to make it type safe and maybe save lives. If you made the same error for boost units, this is what you get as an error. In function, and this is a function name, if you will be careful, you will find three dots at the end of this of the slide. It means that it's not the end of the of the function name of the first line of the error log because this is still the first line stating the function where the error happened. This is the rest of the function name, and there's an error could not convert some operator star, and again we are out of this slide screen this this, this slide here. And even more operator star. And at the end, from quantity three dots, three dots, three dots to quantity three dots, three dots, three dots. And I assume you know everything, right? What happened here? What is wrong? Or not? This is not the best user experience. It didn't compile it, right? It's good because, because it is safe to use. But then you spend hours finding out why your cal calculation doesn't compile. And this is not the best user experience for anyone. For Nichols house units, there is a different approach. There is no, there is no uh, overall resolution process failing here, but there is a static assert so stating static assertion failed, units are not comp compatible. So the error is short. There is a nice error message at the end, but actually there's information that there's instantiation of a function required from, and please tell me what are the units here, looking at the error log. Which units are not compatible? What was expected? What was provided? A bunch of ratios, right? It's, again, really hard to understand what's going on here. With the library we implemented, you have the information that in function, SA speed is a return, return type of this, of this function. SA length in meters is the first argument, SA time in seconds is the second argument. And we couldn't convert for this operator star from quantity of an unknown dimension, because this unknown dimension had dimension length in exponent one and dimension time in exponent one, right? Because we, oh, actually should have an error here. <laughs> Sorry, there should be a star. It's a bug on the slide. Because we should divide it and then it will be minus one here and this minus one will be speed. But with multiply, that is not visible here, there should be a multiply under the dot. Then uh, you should see uh, exactly this result. So length multiplied by time. So exponent one, exponent one. So library tells you explicitly that this is an unknown dimension and it has unknown coherent unit for this unknown dimension, and, you, and it was trying to convert it to dimension speed in meters per second. I would argue this is much better user experience for those error logs than in other solutions on the market. That's what we scope for, that's what we try to, to, to optimize for. We are still trying to optimize for, we are considering maybe getting rid of, rid of this exponent, part here, but it's not that easy. There are always some, some engineering trade-offs to be done here. So as you can see, the library preserves nicely, um, nicely named types by the user by not using aliases. All other cases had those issues because they are using template aliases everywhere. We are using strong types to define speed, second, length, meter, and so on. Not just template aliases, which vanish during the compilation process. Another case is when you would like to assign an incorrect dimension to another dimension. So for example, here, we want to create a 
quantity of acceleration a and we are basically in boost units multiplying meters uh, creating 100 meters and divided by seconds it should be second square not second so there is one multiplication missing here and that's why it's incorrect calculation here right and this is an error lock error conversion from quantity unit leaves three dots three dots three dots three dots three dots to non scalar types three dots three dots three dots three dots three dots requested and again you know what's wrong here right In need Holocaust library, we provide the same. If you want, so we want to have acceleration in meters per second squared, and we again forgot to make squared seconds here, and we get an error that in instantiation of function convert with units ratio, 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 uh, required from another some type trait or, or type. Ratio, ratio, ratio. Static assertion failed units are not compatible. But again, it's really hard to find out what are the units here, what was provided, what was expected. With the library we implemented, uh, we provide the disacceleration expected in meter per second squared. We provide the same wrong calculation here. And there is information that error convert conversion from quantity of units physical SI dimension speed to in, in SI meter per second to non-scalar type acceleration in meter per second square. So as you can see, the library took this length in meters, this time in seconds, and after the operation the division on those, it determined that it's a dimension speed provided by the user as a strong type. And the unit that's a result of this division is meter per second. And it basically reconstructed the strong types provided by the user. We call it the Doncastic facility. I was speaking about this on the previous talk on CppCon. So if you're interested in this, either see the talk or go to our documentation. But with this, the error lock looks really nice, right? Because we know this is acceleration, we know this is speed. Library knows this is speed. Not an unknown dimension. Right? Unknown dimension was in the previous case because it was something strange. When something is correct, then we have a correct unit here and correct dimension. User experience is not only about error logs, it's also about debugging. So let's put a breakpoint in our correct division operation here for boost units. We get information that this is the generic function, right? This function that works with with any any dimension and, and of length and a dimension of time and the, and the units of those and returns as velocity based on the input dimensions, right? So it just divides stuff. Kilometers per hour per um, kilometers per, per hour makes us the final velocity, one division operation. So we don't know exactly what are the types here, and we would like the compiler to tell us. And this is what compiler tells us for, for boost units. Again, we don't know exactly what was provided. For Nick Holthouse, again, we get a bunch of, of ratios on the list. For our library, we have information that basically this is a breakpoint in the function average speed that uh, takes the first argument of dimension length in kilometers and the second argument of dimension time in hours. And now we know what we're working with, right? So again, I argue this is a really good value added to this, uh, to this domain by, by the, the solution that we used. Okay, I don't see any questions from this chapter, so let's continue to framework basics. How do you feel about such an interface? We have function foo that takes void pointer with arg of argument named t and returns a void pointer. This is something we are laughing at, right? This is something we know from C. This is something that we say we are better because we have strong ties in C++. 
right? We don't do some such stupid problems. We don't make problem, problems with interfaces because we, with strong types, we are able to provide explicitly what we expect for this function to be provided and what it returns, right? So let's see what we do. We are writing lambdas like this. We are writing function templates like this. In the actual value of C20, generic functions, we can type it this way. We are writing classes like this. How is it different in terms of the interface documentation, interface specification, than the C case? Of course, from the runtime point of view, it's totally different, right? This one will fail at runtime. This one will fail at compile time if you provide something wrong. But you know already that this error during compile time will be really long and, and hard to analyze. And actually, if you see something like this on cppreference.com or, or Doxygen or whatever other documentation tool as, a, as, a, as an API reference, you will not know what is expected and what will be being returned from this function. That's why. I claim that unconstrained template parameters are the void star of C++. And we should do better. And we can with C++ 20 concepts. So what are the basic concepts in the library? The most basic concept is a unit. Everything depends on a unit. It's a building block of the library. Every unit of specific dimension is a scaled unit of, of, of some reference unit. So for example, for, for SI system and systems implemented based on SI, like we have implementation of international system, FPS, CGS, and many others, they, they still are based on, on SI units, so they are convertible to SI units. They have the same reference unit. So all of them are provided as ratios, as, as some, some scaled units of, of meter. Also, as you can see, every dimension here takes the unit as a so-called coherent unit. Coherent unit is a unit of, of the dimension um, as specified without any prefixes. So for, for uh, in SI system, velocity is specified in meters per second because the meter is a unit of length and time is a unit of seconds, right? For FPS, CGS, and maybe other systems, those will be different. So this is system-specific. What is the current unit of specific dimension? If you want to create a simple unit in our library, so for example, you want to extend the library with a simple unit, you may create a named unit called meter. We are using CRTP a pattern here. So CRTP stands for Curiously Recurring Template Parameter Idiom. And then next one is the symbol of this named unit. And the prefix means that it's SA prefix allowed to work with this unit. So you can create kilometer from meter using SA prefix. And this is what we do here. We, take, we want to create kilometer. So we take prefix unit, we provide CRTP again parameter here. And then we say kilometer. Kilo is the prefix of this prefix family for SA. And then we provide the reference unit to be scaled, so meter. As you can see, we are creating strong types here as, as an inheritance rather than using template aliases. And that's why the types don't vanish during compilation process. If you want to create something similar for time, again, we create second. We say that's an empty unit of symbol S with SA prefix. And then you can say that minute is the named scaled unit with the symbol min. There is no prefix. There are no kilo minutes, right? Or, or centi minutes. So there is no prefix for minutes. It's ratio 60 of second. So our reference unit. Our is again a named scaled unit of symbol h, no prefix, ratio 60 of minute. Notice that you can reference also other scaled units, not always the base reference unit directly. So you can say that hour is 60 minutes and the minute is 60 seconds. And that is fine if you want to specify this this way. Of course, you can also say that hour is 3600 of seconds 
And it's also fine. It's up to you to, 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 to decide how you want to specify your units. For a unit of direct dimension, direct quantity, you specify meter per second. We just say it's a unit, meter per second. We don't say anything about its ratio. We don't say anything about its symbol because this symbol is being derived from the base unit, right? It will just take this M and S and we print it based on the uh, recipe provided by the by the, the, the dimension that says that basically velocity is length divided by speed. And then if you want to create kilometer per hour, you can say that it's a deduced unit. Deduced because it takes dimension speed, that I will show you on the next slide how it's specified. And based on the recipe in dimension speeds, speed, it applies kilometer for length, hour for time, and deduces what's the final ratio for kilometer per hour. So you don't have to care about those ratios by yourself. They will be just divided, multiplied as needed and as provided in dimension speed recipe to just get the final ratio of kilometer per hour to meter per second. So as I said, unit is a build, building block that is basically um, every, everything on, on, of the, in the library depends on. Then we have dimensions. Dimension matches a dimension of either a base or derived quantity, right? We have a base dimension here or derived, derived dimension. Um, base dimension is associated with a unique symbol identifier for this base dimension and the base unit. Direct dimension has a list of exponents that can be either exponents of the base unit or other direct dimensions, and it also takes a unit, a coherent unit of direct dimension. So for example, you can specify that dimension length is a base dimension with symbol L. This is what ISO specifies for L. And the base unit of this length in SI system is meter. Dimension time with symbol T, and in SI it will be second. And then you can say that dimension speed is a direct dimension uh, again, CRTP parameter provided here with a coherent unit meter per second, so the one provided on the previous slide. And then you have exponent of dimension length one and exponent of dimension time minus one. So this is the recipe to create our speed. And this is how the kilometer per hour know, knew that it has to divide the units provided for those on the previous slide. Then we have quantities. Quantity is a concrete amount of a unit for a specified dimension with a specific representation. There are helpers provided like this length that basically say that, that this is a quantity of dimension length. And you can just provide unit and the representation for it. By default, it's double. And you can say SI length, SI kilometer as a unit and the representation type as an integer. Quantity point is an absolute quantity with respect to some origin. So it's similar to time point that we have in Chrono library. It is created from another quantity value. And concepts are really useful and they are used everywhere in our library. We also have dimension specific concepts like speed, saying that speed is quantity of dimension speed. And what we're actually trying to do here is calculate fine for speeding. We provide speed as an argument and the price as a return type. So what is speed? It's a quantity of dimension speed. What's quantity of? Quantity of is a, is, is a quantity for t, dimension for d, and the dimension in t should be equivalent to d. Quantity, right now it's a specialization of quantity, but we are thinking about making this more generic. For example, to work with chrono duration too. Dimension is either base dimension or derived dimension, as you've seen previously. Direct dimension is derived from specialization of direct dimension base class. And base dimension is derived from specialization of base dimension. And with this, everything works fine. Everything is strongly typed. We know exactly what to provide to everything in our framework and in user interface. Um, Next point is to provide conversions between quantities. For this, we have quantity cast, so similar to duration cast in Chrono, and we provide the destination quantity for the cast. But what's different than Chrono, thanks to concepts, 
we can specify quantity cost for dimension only, for unit only, or for representation only, leaving all of the all other parameters of the quantity intact. So you don't have to provide all of the quantity all of the time if you want to change one, one thing at, at, at a time. I just see a question that does the library support non-integral exponents for base units to make a direct unit? Yes, it does support it. So you can provide dimension, you can provide the, 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 the length is one comma second, comma two, for example, if you want to square root something. If you square root the, the, the dimension, then you get the, the uh, non-integral exponents in the dimension. It is supported. I don't see the second question. Let's see how are operations like square root or cube root handled in the exponents. Uh, exactly the same question as I said. Uh, those will, will be provided by non-integral exponent parameters. Mm. Do the integral representation require the template types? Is five q kilometer a double? No, uh, five q kilometer is right now an integer sixty four t, as it's compatible with with, with two crown duration. But yeah, we know that it might be a problem and we are considering making it double always, or you just have to put five dot Q kilometer to get to get a double in the representation. And as I said, we are still working on something that's uh, an alternative way to create to create units and quantities, uh, but it's too early to talk about it. Uh, the library appears to be benefit from concepts using a different capitalization scheme than types. Yes, I've been um, in the room in LWG when we discussed a standard case for concepts, and this was really, really bad for my library. Uh, uh, we have a thread on, uh, on the issues list in our GitHub repository on moving to standard case for concepts, but as it, is, it happens that it's not that easy, because in some cases we, have, we want to have the type and the concept named the same like quantity and quantity, ratio and ratio. And what to do in such a case? We don't know yet. We, don't, we cannot find a good name. If you have a good solution, good idea, please go to our issues list and, and help us um, renaming those to standard case. I know there is, will be really interesting discussion in LEWG when we provide this paper about this. Are representation costs implicit? Uh, representation costs uh, implicit, implicit conversions for representations is being done in the same way as it being done in the chrono duration. So you can always convert from integ integral representation to, to the double one, but not from double to integral because it's truncating conversion. Okay, and let's move on because we are tight on time and I don't want to go over time, but I, I'm afraid I will go a bit. So let's continue. Uh, concepts are not just a syntactic sugar over enable if or maybe some uh, specializations of the of the type in function arguments. For example, you can with concepts you can easily constrain the function return type, which is not easy to do with any other solutions we have in in the language. You can easily constrain the uh, user variable on the stack without any additional um, features with the language. So you cannot do this otherwise easily. Also, you can constrain class template parameters easily without introducing additional parameters to the class template and having to provide partial specializations for some, spe some specific uh, hmm, SPINA solutions here. So this is way better than you working with, 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 uh, with SPINA or way better than working with, for example, specializations of the types in function arguments here. That's why we work with, with concepts, and actually concepts also are much, much faster in compile time than Sphina. I measured it's way faster. You can find the, my, uh, my benchmark results on my talk during C++ on C. Benefits of using concepts. Clearly state the design intent in the interface. So if you see the documentation, you know exactly what the author of the interface was meant, what meant for this argument. They're embedded in template signature, so present in documentation, simplify it and, and extend Sphina. So it's not only enable if, not only void t, but even in those cases, it's much simpler and faster. Uh, greatly improve error messages, because uh, all, of you, all of the error messages happen on the point of, of, of usage of the function, not deeply nested 
in the implementation error of specific function implementation. Uh, another thing to, to discuss here is what would happen if unit was a constant, because this was a common solution like 10, 15 years ago for physical unit libraries. And it's actually brought even in ICOC++ committee lately that a, that, that a unit should be, should be a constant rather than a type. So let's say that meter is just one meter. Kilo is 1,000. Kilometer is 1,000 meters, right? Second is one second. Hour is 3,600 seconds. Then you provide this to our average speed. And then you get the result. Basically what it does, it works always on the coherent units of the, of the system. So there are a lot of uh, implicit conversions being done. There are, uh, there's lots of, lots of precision being done. There are some runtime performance that, that, that hits you because you are basically have do, doing all of those calculations and conversions at the runtime rather than remembering the time during compile time. So we want to define units as types. Uh, before C++20, those definitions had to be done with uh, macros. So, for example, this is an example of Nick Holthaus. This is the extension of this, of this macro. There are more, more macros here, and each macro looks like this one, providing many different instances of functions, type traits, and many other stuff to the library. And they said in the requirements that you want, don't want to use macros. And actually, it's possible thanks to class types as non typeable parameters, which is a new feature of C20. You can specify it seconds, minutes here, and then provide the ratio. Uh, and it works just fine. We don't have, we, we can provide all of the information needed for a unit in one definition in C without using any macros. When you implement this, this named unit, there is a basic symbol text, which is NTTP parameter. There is ratio one provided here implicitly. There's NTTP parameter. You store this NTTP parameter inside the class as a static value. When you do prefix T unit, then you can easily multiply those NTTP parameters rather than using std, multi, uh, std ratio multiply. You can just multiply those because those are values, not, not types. And you can easily merge symbols of the text for prefix and the unit because those are, again, values, not types. It turns out that it simply simplified a lot in our library. For example, when we wanted to create some uh, um, base unit ratio for all of the exponents on the list, we had to, before we had to do some, some traditional approach with those ala, uh, um, recursive template instantiations. It's not recursion, but basically you, tr you truncate the list, get one and then calculate. With using values, we are able to just use fold expressions here which is much faster to compile, much easier to maintain, much easier to write. I would argue that class types as non type parameters is probably one of the most significant improvements in the template meta programming in the last decade. If something behaves like a value, it probably should be an NTTP. Please think about it in your code. To implement NTTP, I will not go into details here. You have to make members public because those have to be structural types, and structural types requirements require you to have public, uh, public members, something similar to aggregates. Uh, for basic string, big string, it's the interface that is typical to the, to the string. There are iterators, constructors, size, history, index operator, iterators, some operator plus. And operator equals, equals, and starship operator, which is one more feature of C20 that I really love and it helps a lot in writing the library. It just makes a lot of code to disappear. Uh, talking about C20, uh, we support text output. We can output by streams. As you've seen already, we can provide any quantity to stream and it will print correctly a value and the, and the unit. But we can also use, use, use FMT format. Right now we are using the Victor's library uh, and waiting for the first implementation to come in the C++ compiler. So you can provide any format for the library. 
you can print only values or only units or specify what's the uh, separation between those and have it printed. By default, we support Unicode, but with the A modifier here, you can specify that it should be ASCII only output, and then you will have, you will get um micro U second square and an ASCII representation of it. We also um, cooperate with Linear Gbla guys that are providing P1385 paper and is going probably to be standardized for C plus plus twenty three. So you can create linear algebra of quantities. I provide operations on those and get expected result. You can also create quantities of linear algebra, so revert the dependency. Now you're creating length of a vector. Vector is a representation type here. And again, doing the operations and output. This time, all of this is meter rather than, in previous case, meters everyone everywhere in the in the vector or matrix. Last chapter. Sorry for being a bit over time. We had many questions and and yeah, I will finish in three minutes. Environment compatibility next steps. Here the list of is the list of features that we are currently using in the library. Concepts, class entity piece, Consistent and defaulted comparison, explicit of bool, down of type name, lambdas in inverted context, immediate functions actually we plan to use soon, and we are waiting for good modules implementations that we would work, work with because it's really needed to provide SI implementation for all the system at once, for our case, in, in, with modules. From library, we are using context algorithm a lot, a concepts library, of course, and, and FMT which basically provides all of the formatting facility. Compiler support. We supported GCC 9.3 until 0.6.0. In 0.6.0, that was released two days ago, actually we had to drop it because of some um, uh, problems with it, bugs and, and, and the lack of features. So right now the library is compatible with GCC 10 plus and with the latest Visual Studio 16.7 with a few exceptions. The exceptions are that Visual Studio still does not support this nice uh, terse um, constraint uh, con concept syntax. You have to type something like this, and then it works fine for Visual Studio. We are still waiting for Clang to catch up. As I said, there are plans for it to be standardized. If the committee will decide that it's no, then no. We'll not force everyone to, to, to standardize it. Uh, then we'll, we'll be just be the library on the GitHub. But anyway, I recommend you trying it and provide the feedback. Uh, we already dedicated a lot of hours in the committee about discussions. It seems that there is a lot of interest in the committee and in the industry to get it standardized. We For, for now, the feedback is really positive, but Actually, we don't have it too much. We need more field experience and feedback from people. And getting to C++ 23 might be challenging because of it, because we lack feedback for now. Also, schedule is really tight. We already lost like at least three meetings, face-to-face -face meetings, and we don't know what is the future. And so the COVID doesn't help here too. And first of all, we want to ensure that the library is ready before we start the process of standardization. And to make sure about that it's ready, we really need feedback from you guys. If it's, if it's working for you or not, if there are any requirements not covered, or everything is fine. So please try and tell us about your experience and requirements. For companies, please provide your feedback from production or maybe proof concept use and requirements you have for such a library. For authors of other libraries, implementation experience and production feedback. GitHub issues are not only to complain about something not working right, right? If you are happy with the library, please provide it to there. Say, uh, we are using this in the production, it, it works really well for us, because this is a sign for us that it's, it's actually, this library is actually being used and it proves to be correct and, and fine for your use cases. It's really important for us to have such feedback. So please go to our issues list. You'll find a lot of discussions, um, next steps, feedback, and everything there. 
it's not just to raise problems. Last part, I would like to say thank you for everyone. It's not just me. This is a work of many, many people so far. I would like to thank you, say thank you to every author of every library on, in the internet, especially to, to, to Stephen Watanabe and Christian Schabel for Boost Unit, for Nick Holthouse, that basically was an inspiration for this library to, to provide some interfaces. Martin Mene, Jan Sende for their libraries, which are really great, and other authors too. C++ Physical Unit's library is not, it's nothing new. We are working on this for many years. We know how to do it properly. We have a working experience and production experience with it. We just want to standardize the best modern interface for it right now. I would like to thank you to my contributors that helped me a lot while writing the code, helping me with the documentation, writing first ISO papers about it, or just participating in the discussions and providing requirements. Contribution, as I said, is not only about developing code, it's also about providing feedback, sharing ideas, and, and so on. And special thanks to Walter Brown. Walter started to talk about, about this, about standardizing physical units many years ago. Here is a paper from 98 from the conference when he's talking about SI library for unit-based computation. But we may not agree with Walter on, on, on many on, or, or some cases. But the feedback from Walter is really appreciated, and I really value his feedback here and help. I would also say thank you to Howard Hinnant for his Chrono and Date library. Those are awesome. I really learned a lot from them and took a lot of inspiration for this library. And last but not least, I would like to thank GC developers that make basically GCC happen, that made Concepts TS as the only compiler supporting it in GCC 7, so three years ago. And we could start writing our implementation with GCC7 and Concepts TS thanks to them. Thank you, guys. You are doing a great job. Last, if you are interested about Concepts, want to learn more from my experience, please join the, the Concepts class after on Monday. And, and that's all. And with this, thank you very much, guys. Um, there will be an AMA session right away in this room, so we can discuss stuff after that, and, and thank you for being here, and stay safe.